What's going on, champions? Good to have you back. Something a little different today. Just a quick chat. I'm going to keep it simple and easy so I can just get straight to the point. Basically, I've had a few people jump into the inbox asking this question due to a previous video where I said I'm reverting back to paid shipping opposed to free shipping, which I've done for the last couple of years. And they're asking why, they're asking what I think's best, and I can't be bothered responding to all of them. So I'm gonna do this and then send them here. So basically what this is, this is why I'm doing it. Please remember that everybody's different. Every situation is different. I'll talk about some different situations quickly, but I'm gonna talk about mine and why I'm going back to paid post. Let's get into it. Simply when I started doing this stuff many years ago, I did paid post because I was getting my head around it. And I think, still think to this day, that's the best way to go about it for somebody that's new, um, not get sucked into the free postage stuff. But I did that for a long time and then I decided to go free post. There was a lot of talk at the time about algorithm and the push that you'll get. I was sort of, you know, a year or two into being full time. So I just wanted to get the most out of eBay that I could and the benefits of it. And if that was a thing, then I'm gonna do it. Simple as that. Um, anyway, I did it, I converted. And that's the main reason, it was an algorithm thing and it's kind of just what everyone was talking about, what everyone was doing. So I jumped on board and I did actually get a little bit of a decrease at the time. I don't know if that was because my regular customers realized that something was different, whether the algorithm didn't like the change, whether it's coincidental that it had changed, I don't know. I left that to be, you know, after time, sales were still good, everything was well. And I did like, the free post thing, I think it's easy enough to manage, but I'm converting back and I wanna talk about the pros and the cons of free ship versus paid. I know there are videos out there that do this. I haven't really seen a whole heap of them, so I don't know if I'm touching on every point here, but I'm gonna do my best and why it's working for me. So some of the reasons why I would use free post. Uh, I think some of the positives, it can attract more buyers. It is attractive, it looks better, free post, people, kind of these days expect that they see big companies just dishing out free posts and then when they've got to pay a postage fee you know it's a psychological thing a negative of free post and this is one of the reasons why i'm pushing towards paid post is the risk of like a loss of item or uh, a return so if i am charging post and look i have free returns everybody's different i would highly encourage people to have returns at least on whether they be free or not. I have them domestically free, internationally via pays. Uh, but I mean, they can get it anyway if they want it, they just scan the system. But if the item is lost or damaged in transit and you don't have the full insurance there, you might get stung for some of the ch charges, uh, depending on your shipping company. And then the main one is returns. So I do have free returns and you know, when you get them, uh, it's not so bad, you can list them again, but each time you get a return, you, you've paid for that post already, you've got to do it again. And this is one of the big factors that I want. Uh, not that I get heaps of them. Returns don't really worry me too much because I know I can sell it again. I'm trying to just pump through good quality stuff. And most of the time for me, if it is a return, it's a sizing thing and you know, easy done. Uh, I don't mind returns, but Having free post and free returns, uh, it can be a bit of a, a negative. So that's one of the sort of reasons I looked at it. As we go to scale up, there's going to be errors, there's going to be returns. It's just what happens. Uh, I try to minimize it as much as possible, but it's going to happen. So I also think a negative of free post is risk of abuse. Some buyers will abuse the system. They know how to manipulate, uh, especially newer sellers, but they can work their way around once they work out pricing and things like that, how to kind of rig it and, you know, get one on you. So even though I'm pretty confident I'm gonna tackle them pretty well, uh, there could be a moment there where it does go tits up. It's not one that I'm super worried about, but it is one that you can be worried about just purely because there's some evil creatures out there and uh, yeah, they'll try and stitch you up. Another one that I think is a negative for free postage is market saturation. And that's because we all believe that free postage is, you know, this unique thing that gets you more sales and more eyes on your items. But everyone's doing it, you know? Uh, I mean, if everyone in your niche is doing it, you're not that unique, are you? You're not standing out above anyone purely for having that free post on. There's two options. 
paid post or free post. There's another little trick that you can do. It's paid post, but you have a little bit under everyone else and it makes you look a little bit better. Don't tell anyone I told you. But I think it does become a bit less of a unique factor from a buyer's point and it may not have much impact in their behavior. I do a lot of men's clothing. Um, my main store is probably made up of 80% men's clothing these days. And it's just one of the niches that I'm in and I feel like paid posts is the better way to go. Story time. A few years ago when I started going free post, uh, whether it was algorithmic, whether my customers didn't like it, but I moved to free post and my sales actually went down from that. I've spoken to other people, one being, and I'm sure she won't mind me saying this, I haven't actually asked her, but hey, Sam, someone that I respect a lot, she's been on this channel, she's been on Wayno's channel, Brad and Jazz, she's been around, uh, doesn't do a whole heap of social media herself, but Hammy Custler, uh, she does large volume, very large volumes, probably more than most that I know, um, and knows a lot about eBay. And she told me a while ago that she went from free to paid, and this was quite some time ago now, and her sales went up. So it did the absolute opposite to what mine did. And, you know, her thoughts, among others that I've spoken to, were being in that men's clothing niche, men are dumb. Let's face it, men are dumb. And they just buy, they want to get in, they want to get out, they want to get home and have a frothy if you go shopping with them. And it sort of goes the same here. They're not looking at postage. It doesn't matter what's on there. They're just buying. So they're potentially, and this is a psychological thing, looking at the lower pricing without post, regardless, free post or whatever. This is just my thoughts, and this is quite uh, quite a few people have said to me as well, and that's one thing I've looked at, and I thought, with this niche, I'm looking at a lot of the items now. Yes, a lot still free post, a lot. It's very mixed up, but I feel like there's a bit of an edge just purely for that reason with having paid post on. So it helps with, obviously, I've spoken about the returns and this, but another thing that absolutely shits me up the wall I don't know who come up with that saying, but I like it. Who shits people up walls? Some more positives with the free post, uh, higher visibility. So this is a proven thing, eBay have said that they are gonna push you a bit higher up the markings if you've got free posts, simple as that. It doesn't mean you're not gonna get pushed up there. If you don't have it, if you have a good store with good listings at a good price, you're still gonna get pushed up there, but they are gonna favor the ones that do have the free post. It's just normal, it makes their platform platform look better and their customers happy, so that's what they're gonna do. And that's understandable. So that's one thing that I think might hurt me going into uh, paid posts. Uh, it's also simplified pricing. So for the buyer, what I mean by this, the buyer can, it's simple to them. They don't get any additional charges or anything. They just see the free post, they pay their price, they go. They don't have to worry about the shipping side of things. They're unaware of that. So uh, I think simplicity for the buyer is a huge pro, but not so much for yourself. It's just more likely that you'll get the click purely from, from them thinking that way. Positive feedback. One bonus is they can't give you a one star rating for your postage charges, it is always gonna be a five star rating. Uh, something that I find a lot of buyers do do. They will give you a one star because they're not happy with the price they've paid, even though you've charged the exact amount that you've paid to post it, and that has nothing to do with you. So I think that is a huge negative on your behalf because that'll bring that star rating down. We know it's kind of irrelevant, but it's still something that's there that might get in someone's mind, especially if they're only new to the platform for buying. If you want eBay Plus, you gotta have free posts. Simple as that, and that's, you have to have free post if you want eBay Plus, simple. Number one thing that I love about free postage, and this is the one thing I am going to miss, and that's your bundles. You're more likely to get bundles because people see the free posts, they know they don't have to worry about shipping charges or what it's gonna cost when they get all the stuff. But the best part is, now, free post isn't actually free, and I think we've touched on this before, if you are new to this and don't understand, that's fair enough. If you've been around a while, you probably should fucking know that when you do free post, you incorporate the price of the goods into the item. So you're not actually giving them free post. It's just in the item. You're charging more for the item with free post than what someone is that's giving them postage. Hope that makes sense. But what happens when people come through and they want to buy a few things, they've got to reach out if you do have 
paid postage on, they need invoices, they need to know how much it's going to cost if they buy X amount of items, especially if they're buying different sizes of items. And that is a bit of a pain in the a-hole. So when you've got free on, they don't have to worry about that. They just buy or they send their offer and, you know, load up then pay for it. And what happens there, because you've already incorporated the costs into the item, you make more money. Simple as that. Whereas if you're paid post, then what you have to do, send the invoice, actually pay the correct postage fees because it's not incorporated into the costs and you don't get as much. So essentially you can make a bit off it. You can change things around and if you do want to, you know, give them better value for their bundles, there's ways to do that. But most people aren't going to worry about that. They just see free posts, they grab it, they go. So that is the number one thing that I think is the, is amazing with free postage, in my opinion. And... I will miss that a lot, but I have my reasons to jump ship and go the other way. The offer feature, one of the best features on eBay, I love it. Uh, the ability for people to send you offers. And I found when I had paid postage and then went to free postage, that people were still offering similar numbers. So I'd get an item for say $20 plus post and someone might offer me 10 bucks. If I had that same item or a different item, $20 free post, I feel like they're still offering that 10 bucks. But the same thing, psychological, not looking at that free post thing. Yes, some people do, um, but that's why I found, that's a, that's a thing that I found to sort of happen. I, I fully believe that. And I also believe that, you know, um, if you've got, well, if you've got the postage already there, it's sort of easier to no negotiate with people and it's easier on their end too. They know they've got their postage there. They can put their offer in even with that. Uh, whereas the free postage is there. Some people might go, that item's only worth 10 bucks. So they send you 10 bucks and then you go, nah, I want 20. And you, you don't mention postage or anything to them. They don't see that. They don't realize that at the time, postage is gonna cost the 10 bucks. Whereas if it's already there, sometimes they just don't think about it. And then the item price just looks a bit cheaper. I hope that makes sense. That's one of the main things where I want to go back as well. And it's that offer feature. I, I accept and send a lot of offers. And just having that uh, pricing already there is a bonus. Another negative of paid post is additional fees. So you do get a little fee from eBay um, for charging it. And I've heard some people whinge at me. They said, well, we already pay enough fees. This is bullshit. Why the frigging hell do we have to pay more fees to charge post? And it's not eBay trying to steal money off you like some think. Back in the day, what people would do is jack up the price of the postage to ridiculous amounts and then give away free uh, the item basically free. What this would do, it would avoid all fees that were paid uh, for the item that they're selling. It was just a little shortcut around. So basically I was waffling on and I didn't realize the camera had actually died. So I didn't finish what I was saying, but I was just about done anyway. You know, I was gonna wrap it up there. Um, for me, I'm converting back purely. One of the main things is the offer, offer function. I just think it's really frustrating when you cop those offers and uh, you've got the free postage there, you've got to negotiate more. I feel as though Having that paid post there, you're still getting majority of the same offers. It's pretty rare you're getting those low ballers. And the other one is the niche that I'm in. So I think the men's clothing niche, I think, intertwines with that offer system too, where the pair of them sort of work well together. And I found that by having that, and a lot of the other competitors do have that in that niche, that the sales actually do better. From it and there's quite a few people clothing sellers that agree with me and i'd love to hear in the comments what your thoughts are on that if you have an opinion based on that um and i really think it kind of pushes the algorithm thing out providing your listings are good you're still pricing competitively i feel as though you still you don't have an upper edge but you're just as good as what the free posters are so uh, that's just my opinion that's why i'm sort of switching back and i feel like it's probably the way to do it these days. But uh, yeah, that's based on um, just my experiences. So I'd love to hear what your niches, niches are because I know like if you're selling regular DVDs and video games and stuff, it's usually free post because majority of that 
the competitors are doing that. And I used to, you know, sell a fair bit in those spaces. I don't anymore. All my video games go out to the market these days. And then DVD, I do little lots in that here and there. But um, I don't, I've never tackled that, that, uh, that niche very hard personally anyway. I think the book niche would be a free poster. Um, yeah, I feel like it all just comes down to the niche. But once again, as my opinion, I'm not pushing anyone into anything. I'd love for a discussion down below and see what everyone thinks because everyone's different. And as I always say, do what works for you because if it's working for you, you're doing something right. And everybody that's on this little fucking idiot box that you're watching does shit different. And I love experimenting with different things. Hey, I might come back in 12 months' time and go, this was terrible. I've gone back again and contradict myself with what I've said, but that's not a bad thing because I'm doing whatever's working at the time or whatever better. So um, that's just what I look at. But anyway, I appreciate you for being here. Very different one today for sure. I'm gonna try and punch out two videos this week for you because this sort of talk is kind of boring for me. I know people enjoy that sort of thing, but I wanna get silly and go and find some shit on the hunt. So we're gonna do that this week. See you then. Dip a dip a doodle dumb, I'm a thrift a big fat Make it dip a doodle dumb, I'm a thrift a big